Yo, what's going on guys? In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you everything you need to know about iMovie 2018. Without further ado, here are 10 super cool, super useful, easy tips and tricks that are going to help you edit like a professional. Welcome to my channel guys, my name is Jack or it's Jack Cole. I create video production content every single week, whether it be video editing, videography, or uh, covering topics on how you can make money making videos. Essentially, my channel is all around video production themed, and as I just said in the introduction, we're gonna be taking a look into iMovie 2018 in today's video, and overall doing a breakdown of 10 tips and tricks that you guys can use to dramatically improve your video production in the upcoming weeks, years, basically, if you don't even know anything about iMovie at this stage in the video that you're watching it now, then by the end of it, you will know 10 more things than you know now, which now you know nothing. But anyway, without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, guys, so the first effect I'm actually gonna be teaching you guys is going to be the overlaid image effect, the double video effect, if you will. Essentially, we have two clips here from a sequence, one of my face closed up. Uh, let me actually extend that a little bit, just as far as it can actually go until it cuts back. Um, so essentially we just have two, two cool clips here. Does this cut back? It does. Hold on. Let me bring it one more frame here. Um, and essentially I'm going to show you guys how you can make a pretty cool effect out of just these two clips without even necessarily using an effect. And the way you'd want to do that is grab one of them, uh, just by simply, you know what I mean? Clicking on it and actually just dragging it above another one. Okay. Now when you do this, you can actually select the top clip. And actually just go over here guys to this kind of um, video overlay settings. Go ahead and tap it and then you guys can actually just start bringing the opacity down a little bit, right? So maybe even down to about there. And now you see when we actually go and play this, this has a kind of cool overlaid image effect, almost maybe like a double exposure type of thing. We could actually drag it out a little bit more. And uh, if I give this a play, you can see me walking up there in the left. You can also see my face. And then it cuts to, I think, two faces on, on each other, kind of overlaid for a second. Um, overall, it is looking extremely cool in my opinion. And this is just a, a, a very easy effect, uh, you know, emphasis on easy. Obviously, this is a very basic one right here. But I think it's a pretty cool way to start off, obviously. Um, if you had some kind of cooler videos in there, um, you know what I mean? I'm, sh I'm, I'm sure the effect might uh, come off a little bit crazier, a little bit nicer than this. But overall, a very simplistic effect that you can do, do just kind of to be adding another element to your video production. All right, so next up, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can actually fake the mirror effect. Now, there's not really any good uh, visual effects inside of <laughs> iMovie. Really, you kind of have to sort of uh, stretch everything to be uh, a, a, an effect, if you will. But there is a, um, a crop filter and audio effects kind of option up here where you can do some cropping, right? So you can actually uh, put, put some different kind of color corrections, etc., and you can do some stuff like flip it, stuff like that. But to actually replicate a mirror effect, you guys would want to duplicate the clip that you want to do this to. So this one, by duplicating it, all you have to do, or, or to, to duplicate it, all you have to do is hold alt and drag up and it will simply duplicate that clip. Then I want you guys to actually select the top clip, go over here to the um, uh, effects or crop filter and audio effects, click crop filter, and basically just click flipped. Then you want to just go down to um, the, uh, what's it called? This one, the video overlay settings, click it, and then actually just select split screen. And then just like that, that's all you have to do. Um, <laughs> now we have a basic mirror effect. You know what I mean? Whoa, that looked pretty awesome to be honest, I can't even lie. Um, overall, it does look pretty trippy. That looks especially trippy right there. Overall, it's looking very cool, and uh, the mirror effect is not something you can traditionally do in iMovie, so that right there is definitely how you can replicate the mirror effect, which is very dope. And also, hypothetically speaking, say we wanted to kind of create like a cool text overlay on this on this as well, but we wanted it to be kind of blurred out just for some text to be coming up, we would just go to titles and uh, actually just go ahead and... Um, Title, uh, type in pull focus. I think that's what we type in, yeah. Boom, and it pops straight up the pull focus. All we'd have to do is drag that onto our particular um, clip that we wanted it onto. Actually, we just select it and just go ahead and delete the text. And now we would have a, uh, a blurry 
two-headed monster once it gets here. And as you, as you can see, it starts off pretty nice and then it blurs when it gets to this part because of this title here. And then it fades back out to just show my weird looking mirrored face going all crazy. Now next up guys is is going to be something something even more crucial. I think the, these past couple have just been a bit of a mess around, but this one here is going to be focusing on the actual color correction. I don't use iMovie much, so I'm just trying to give you guys all the info I know. Um, and the clip filter, that definitely looked like color correction, but there it is. Color correction, go ahead and slap it. And essentially this right here, this, this, this one here, I believe is brightness. This one here, I believe is, um, is contrast. Yeah, so we could put more contrast that way. And uh, this one here, I believe, is um, to do with the contrast too. And that one there is going to be the highlight. So if we're bringing it all the way up, it's going to be very highlighted. So um, this one here is the vibrancy as well. And this one here just looks like it's the sepia or yeah, 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 yeah. So that one there is the temperature rather. So essentially, guys, doing a color correction uh, slash color grade is going to be very, very useful for your edits just to actually be giving them kind of like a more tied in feel. So you see this sequence here is uh, like four different clips all put into one sequence. Now they're all shot on plain settings. They haven't been color graded or anything, but watch how much uh, nicer tied in all these get when we actually just want to put together a simple color correction, um, just actually to kind of tie everything in all together. And I'm actually just gonna play around with these a little bit guys, just to create a nice, a nice kind of eerie, eerie color correction. And you see how quick you can really do it just by tweaking a few of these sliders, maybe bringing it more towards the blue, but bring it over that way. And now guys, if we give this a play, you can see this has, you know, dramatically tied everything together. It definitely looks more graded like a movie. And, uh, and, and overall, everything definitely feels as though it's, uh, you know, all shot at the same time, et cetera, et cetera, and actually brings everything in together. Also, it makes it feel more dynamic. I think we may have gone a little bit too, too overboard on the, um, on the, on the contrast, but it's all right. It's looking decent. It's looking decent. But overall, that is a, a must. I would 100% say, guys, you need to be color grading and color correcting your stuff. This is going to improve your iMovie videos so much as well. Now, Next up is actually going to be how you can stabilize shaky footage. Now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say all this footage here is too, too shaky at all, but um, it's, it's, it's still definitely worth, worth kind of doing. Um, and the actual way you do that is simply go to stabilization up here, simply click it, and then just actually go to stabilize shaky video, um, and essentially just let it do its thing. It will analyze for dominant motions, and then just basically start working its way through this 15 second clip. And, uh, and, 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 and essentially just, uh, just smooth everything up. As you can see right there, it really wasn't very movie or, uh, or kind of jolty or anything, but right now it is essentially perfectly still, uh, it just tied everything more into, into line even more than it already was. Overall, this is starting to look great so far. And, uh, you're seeing pretty, it, it, it's a pretty easy video editor guys. Honestly, it's, it's really nothing crazy. You shouldn't be stuck on this by all means at all. And uh, essentially, I'm now next up going to be showing you how you can actually do some some overlays and some green screens. Now, overlays and the green screens are uh, are definitely something I would advise if you're getting kind of new to video editing and video production. But you know what I mean. Um, it's not something that that a lot of professionals heavily use, but it's still something that can be very very cool. All right, boom. So first off is there is this overlay. It's pretty cool. It's like an alieny thing. To actually just get rid of the blackness, just go ahead and click this one right here. All right, and th then just go ahead and go back to overlay video settings. And then, yep, you guessed it, just start actually bringing down the opacity. Alternatively, you can actually do a, do, do a green or blue screen, which um, on some stuff works. As you can see, you can kind of see me a little bit here. This is kind of how you can create almost like a double exposure effect where you see the video uh, going on inside of the overlay. But for the majority, guys, you are, you are actually just going to want to turn the opacity down a little bit um, for these particular ones here. Um, the, the, the fade, fades, fades not really doing too much. Overall, um, for, for overlays, I wouldn't necessarily encourage you guys to use too much overlays in here. Overlays can look pretty uh, amateur, but green screens you can get away with because of their kind of default uh, effect that they have again up here in the overlay uh, settings, uh, video overlay settings, which is just the green slash blue uh, screen. Of course, you don't have much control, 
Um, whereas in other video editors, you 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 know what I mean. You you might have a lot more control over this, um, opposed to um, you know, op opposed to the kind of minimalistic um, options you have in this. But boom, you see, we've just enabled <laughs> the explosion to be in the kind of top left. Whatever, it's not really the craziest thing in the world. This. It's 100% just kind of like a mess around um, with the green screens and stuff. By, by, by all means, you can definitely do some cool stuff. Um, but you just have to spend some time finding uh, the right green screens, I swear. All right, boom. So this on screen right now is a piece of text that was a title as part of a after movie I did for a club a while back. And essentially, I want to show you guys now keyframes because this is a very important part of video editing these days. Obviously, all major video editors, Premiere Pro, After Effects, etc. All kind of intricate uh, compositions have keyframes involved in them definitely 100% it's not disputable so here's how you can use keyframes uh, to a certain extent inside iMovie as well click on the kind of thing you'd want to keyframe so I'm going to keyframe frame the position of this faithless thing here I'm going to keyframe the position of it and I actually just want to go up here to the uh, overlay video effects or video overlay settings and just select picture in profile boom now we want to essentially say we wanted to move this from one side to the other. All we would have to do is actually just go ahead and select it. Maybe, maybe here, go ahead and, uh, and click the picture and profile. Go ahead and just set, for example, a keyframe there to tell it that there uh, in the timeline, the text is right there. Then we would skip along later, actually bring it over to here and, uh, and make it bigger and actually just throw that right down there. And now, um, if we actually give this a play from the beginning, guys, because we have keyframed this, the faithless will fly in to actually appear right there at the bottom. So it will fade in. When I run in screen, it will fly on to the bottom. And, uh, and just like that, we've created some pretty joked text right there. And uh, essentially, also, if you would want to kind of go about removing some background noise, um, there's not really much background noise here right now. However, um, hypothetically speaking, let me just go ahead and split this clip real quick. Hypothetically speaking, if this clip right here had a bunch of background noise, this stupid clip of me hiding behind a tree, this was filmed for some randomness a while ago. Um, all we would basically do is go up to the noise removal, noise reduction and equalizer, click that, and actually just click reduce background noise. Um, tick that, and uh, and essentially that is uh, that is uh, that is all you'd really want to do, other than the, other than going to the equalizer. And uh, you could actually go ahead and um, and actually do a, a loudness reduction um, or a flat. Either way, basically, it's it, it's actually hard to kind of tell on these clips right here because there is no noise attached to them. However, you just go up here and actually just click reduce noise, and you can actually reduce that by about you know whatever percentage you want to put in here. Obviously, 100 is going to be the max. Zero, you're not reducing it really at all. You're just clicking it. Either way, 100% is looking uh, is looking good. Now, all right, so next up, I'm going to be showing you guys uh, uh, an amazing way just to kind of tie in your viewers to want to watch the whole thing, the whole of your video, not just be clicking around on some bits that are kind of cool. And the way I'm going to show you guys how to do that is by syncing your projects to the beat. So um, essentially, the way you would do that is by paying attention to the audio waves down here. Each one of these is a beat. That's a beat, that's a beat, that's a beat, that's a beat. And essentially, uh, something that's just super pleasing to the eye is when you actually change clips on the beat, all right? Obviously, I'm sure you've seen this in other projects. If you haven't, uh, you definitely have. You just haven't clocked it mentally yet. And essentially, this is how you would just create a seamlessness throughout your whole video. Now, you'd want to just go ahead and actually select one of the beats, for example, the, the primary beat where it would drop on, just go ahead and right click and actually just go ahead and click trim to playhead, right? And actually that's just going to take it down to that beat as the beginning beat. And now all you'd want to do guys is actually put this here and simply start cutting the clips on significant beats. So all of these big ones here are significant beats. So I'd split it there. I'd go to this one here now and actually split it there. Then I go to this one here and split it there. And then this one here and you guessed it, split it there. And this one and again, split it there. And then what I would do is I would just actually change clip every time the beat goes. All you'd want to do is essentially just cut the beat 
um, at every significant beat, even though these are all little beats, but, but they're not significant ones, and just keep swapping out the, uh, the clips per beat that is actually there. Overall, guys, now there is only one more tactic that I actually have to kind of talk with you guys about, and that is going to be the Ken Burns animated movement shot. How to actually kind of create fake animations, fake movements, fake zooms, zooms ins and zooms outs, if you will. And uh, basically, I'm gonna show you how to do this very quickly. So select a clip you wanna do this on. For example, this one of me running in, boom, or when I smack there, and just go ahead and go up to the crop area, the cropping tool, go ahead and click the Ken Burns, and then literally all you would have to actually do is go ahead and create a zoom in and a zoom out. For example, the end is going to be, let's say the end is gonna be maximum, um, and then the, um, oops, hold on. I'm gonna undo that, boom. So the end is there, the start needs to, the start needs to be either bigger or smaller than uh, than you'd actually want it to be. So, for example, right here, uh, let's actually just go ahead and press this. I want it to start on this rubbish right here, right? All that kind of trash back there that you can see. And I want it to end by selecting the end tool right here on full. Okay, so now if I give this a play, you are seeing that it is zooming out of that trash. And it's now zooming in straight onto my face because it cut clips and it will actually work its way from that beginning A point to that ending B point. As you can see right there, we, we told it to start there and now it works its way all the way to the point where we told it to end and bow. Overall guys, that is the video for today. If you enjoyed how to actually use iMovie 2018, by all means, give a subscribe to the channel if you've made it this far. Definitely subscribe because I upload loads of video production content similar to this one every single week. Thank you guys for watching. I've been Jack Chris, Jack Cole. Have a nice day and take it easy.